All right. Uh, good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you? Fine, thanks, sir. How are you? Thank you so much. Uh, today I am at Kwekwe High School with a 4 Red 1 2021. We are going to be uh, looking on an interesting uh, topic, uh, the sources of uh, history. The sources that provide us with historical information. The sources that unpack about what transpired uh, long ago, what took place uh, long ago, for us to be in a position of knowing about uh, Blazo Lobengula, for us to be in a position of knowing about the Mutapa, about the Roji, about the Toro, about the Mapungubwe, people it is because of these sources that we are use so we are going to uh, discuss uh, these sources in a uh, detail but our special emphasis will be on oral tradition which we'll be calling ori ori then we'll also talk about written records which we are going to call riti and also uh, archaeology and the last source that we are going to talk about is called rock painting which we are going to call rocky so these are the sources that we are going to uh discuss discuss at a day. But before I unpack in detail about what transpired a long ago, we are going to have a presentation from one of the students in this class who is going to present about oral tradition. So I'm going to invite my student to come forward and present about oral tradition. And she's coming. Let's clap hands for her. talk about the sources of history. A source is where we get historical information. Oral tradition is the passing of historical information through the word of mouth from generation to another generation. We've got the advantages of oral tradition. Uh, it is cheap. Unlike other sources of history, such as archaeology, it requires a lot of costs. It creates a good rapport between the storyteller and the listener. It complements other sources of history. For example, linguistics and uh, rock paintings. It is easy to understand and it caters for the illiterate. I'm going to talk about the disadvantages. Our dates are not provided problems of bias and exaggeration. The storyteller can die with the information. The information is not in chronological order like other and like other sources, such as written records. Thank you. Oh, that is excellent. So she talked about what uh, oral what tradition. So you go kuna go 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 here like what she said. Sekuru am here. Can you explain about what transpired long ago? Gogo could now tell you. Unona muzukuru, you see, my muzukuru, my grandchild. These people, they were doing this and that. These people, they were involved in agriculture. These people, they were involved in a pastoralism. So because of that, now you end up knowing about the events that transpired long ago. And she talked about the advantages. You can ask questions. Go 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 go. I do not understand. Can you explain? and the Gogo and the Sekuru could what uh, explain. And as the Gogo and the Sekuru will be explaining now, you see uh, that she or you will be using facial word expressions. So by so doing, you can understand. The Gogo or Sekuru can even stand up. I want to dance for you. I want to sing for you. Let me sing. And you'll be understanding better because of uh, that. That is oral tradition. But the problem, like what she said, oral tradition, uh, does not provide us with accurate dates and accurate names. You can forget. Go, go. When did this what uh, take place? Who were the first rulers of Great Zimbabwe? Oh, I have forgotten. So because of that, now we end up not having enough what uh, information. Or the go, go, or say, can nyepa issue of bias and exaggeration. Tell me, go, go. You know that these people they were hunters, they were pastoralists, they were involved in crop cultivation. But possibly the go, go, nyepa in, in not telling the truth. So those are the disadvantages of using what or oral what 
tradition. Without wasting much of your time, we want to move on and talk about another source again. This source is so interesting. Another daughter of mine, she's going to uh, present about uh, this source. So let's clap hands for her as she's coming. She's going to talk about rock painting. going to talk about rock paintings. The same people painted on rock surfaces and rock caves showing their way of life. They painted using different types of paint such as plant fibers and blood which they got from the animals that they hunted. They hunted their sorry their paintings showed their their ways of life for example hunting, mining and heading cattle. These paintings some of these paintings, you can find them in Domboshara and Matobo. To our own amusement, these paintings are still visible to today, although they were, painting, they, were painting, they were painted a thousand years ago. The advantages of all of our paintings is that the information has lasted for a thousand years and it can... And can and it can be passed from generation to generation. And the disadvantages are that the information does not produce names and dates, and the information can be affected by natural disasters, e.g. rainfall and weathering. Thank you. Oh, that is brilliant. Rocky, Rocky, you saw a rocking and a rocking. You saw that, and I'm explaining that these were what are painted. Where do we find these paintings at Matopo? Where do we find these paintings at Dombosha? People painted hunting, painted gathering, painted what a gathering, what a fruit. So we are in a position of knowing more in detail about the ways of life that were done by the people who survived a long ago. That is good. The disadvantages, vandalization, the disadvantages, it does not provide us with names. Who is this guy? Who is hunting, hunting? Is it Jackie or Susie? We don't you know. Names are not provided. Even the dates are also not what are provided. That is splendid, my daughter. We have got also another uh, presentation. Another daughter of mine, she's going to present about lingui, lingui, linguistics, uh, linguistic, another source that we also use in a uh, history. So let's have, let's come Thanks for yes, she's going to come presenting about linguistics. This morning I'm going to talk about linguistic. Linguistic is the study of languages. The early people spoke different languages and this revealed that their way of life was different. They stayed in different places and spoke different and lived in different environments. The Eurocentric ideologies did not give a true picture on how these early people survived. But these Afrocentric historians revealed that the early people were exposed to different languages, hence their languages were different and they lived in different languages. Advantages of linguistic. It gives a detailed account on the way of life of the early people. It can be passed from one generation to another. One can ask questions and clarification. Then I'm going to talk about the disadvantages of linguistic. There is language barriers and there is the issue of ex exaggeration and interpretation of events. Thank you. That is Blaso linguistics, the study of languages. And so you see uh, that historians also they to visit different sites, different areas that were inhabited by the early people. So when they visit these sites now, we see uh, that the elderly now explained about their ways of life. And by so doing now, we are in a position of knowing about the ways of life that were done by these uh, people. She also explained about the advantages and the disadvantages of using lingui, lingui aesthetics. So we want to move on again and talk about another source. The last source for today, we are going to talk about written records. What took place here on written records? A daughter of mine again is going to present about this. Let's clap hands for her.
morning class. Morning. On written records, we'll be looking at the written sources of history. They, they have advantages. These written records, they, they, they have dates, names, places where, where the history or where the activity took place. They also, they can also be, they, they can also be kept for a long time. Mm -hmm. That. They, co they contain pictures of the, of the events that took place. All languages are written. All information of the events are also written. On the disadvantages, one cannot ask questions about the event. One cannot understand. It is expensive. It does not cater for the blind. And one cannot also ask feedback from, uh, for, from anyone. Thank you. Thank you. That is a written what? Records. So these are written accounts about the ways of life that were done by the early what people. The historians, they wrote down how the people at Great Zimbabwe, how the people in the Mutapa, how the people in the Roshi, how the people in the Nebele State survived. So because of that now, we are in a position of reading a test book. You know that these people, they were doing this like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why? Because of written records, dates are provided, the information can last for a long period of time. But however, the problems are there that this information, it can be uh, uh, destroyed by fire. It can also be expensive and some people will be not in a position of knowing about the ways of life that were done by the Eliot people. That is excellent. So now let's give an overview summary. Which sources do we have in history? We have got source number one. Which are these sources did we talk about today? Number one, we have got, yes, my daughter? Oral tradition. Oral tradition number two. Written records number three. Rock paintings number four. Linguistics, Linguistics number five. We have got another source. Anthropology, so called anthropology, the study of human beings. And that. So that is what we have on the sources of history. Thank you so much. I am Mr. Moso, and today I am with a class uh, in 2021 at Kwekwe High School for Red One. Thank you.